Hey guys, Frank Spear back with you for another teaching today, another episode of Watch This. And today I want to look at the parable of the prodigal son. So we're going to turn to Luke chapter 15. And again, there are those who teach that the coming kingdom uh, that arrived in AD 70 was an invisible realm in heaven and that people were taken off this planet and brought into that invisible realm and that was what the promised kingdom was. I disagree with that. I don't think that's ever taught in the New Testament, although sometimes it can sound like that when we misunderstand the meaning of the metaphors. But we've been looking at a lot of things showing that that just was not the case, and especially the parables. If you read through them, you'll never see anything mentioned that seems like they would be carried off into an invisible realm somewhere. That was certainly not their expectation. Uh, Jesus never taught any such thing, at least in my estimation. Let's jump right in here. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. And Jesus said, A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. Give me my inheritance. So he divided his wealth between them between this son and his other sons. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate with loose living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in the country, and he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, <clears throat> excuse me, and he sent to him and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So this uh, good Jewish boy is living among Gentiles, foreigners, non-Israelites. He's feeding pigs, which was unclean for a Jew. And verse 16, And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating, and no one was giving anything to him. So here he's even willing to live like a non-Israelite, like a pagan. So the son has really strayed a long way from the father. And of course, in the parable, Jesus is referring to the Israelites here who had wandered away from their father, from God, and had been out among the pagans, living like pagans and so forth. Verse 17, but when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread to eat? But I'm out here starving. I will get up and go back to my father's house and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to even be called your son. So make me, hire me on as one of your hired men. So he got up, came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. Here's the point I want to come to today in this parable. For this son of mine was dead, but now he's come to life again. Well, he was certainly not biologically dead. And he did not biologically raise to biological life again from, from being physically dead, right? This is the point of the parable. Watch this. For this son of mine was dead, but has now come to life again. He was lost, and now he's been found. Let us celebrate. Folks, I submit to you, that is the biblical resurrection. That is the biblical resurrection. Lost people being found. People who have exited covenant with God coming back into covenant with God. Repentance, forgiveness equals this brand new life. Right? And in our, for our purposes, in Messiah. That was the being dead and coming to life again. That's the same resurrection that is spoken of throughout the entirety of the Bible. This is the same resurrection Paul is speaking about in 1 Corinthians 15, unless we're prepared to say that there are two resurrections, two different kinds of resurrection. The parable goes on. We're not expositing every verse here because you guys know what the parable means. But we come down here to verse 
32. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, for this brother of yours was dead and is now alive. He was lost, but now he's found. That's the resurrection. Dead Israel coming to life again. Entering into the new covenant and becoming alive to God again. Being born again, so forth and so on. Let's show that. Let's jump over to Luke 16, verse 14. Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money were listening to all these things and were scoffing at Jesus. And he said to them, you yourselves justify yourselves in the sight of men, but God knows your hearts. Men may buy it, but God sees who you really are. For that which is highly esteemed among men is detestable in the sight of God. Watch this now, verse 16. The law and the prophets were being proclaimed until John the Baptist. But since that time, the gospel of the kingdom has been being proclaimed, and everyone is forcing his way into it. Okay, let's, let's examine that for a minute. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John, right? Verse, let's read verse 17 first. But it's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one stroke of a letter of the law to fail. The law and the prophets were pro proclaimed until the time of John the Baptist. That's when the kingdom began being proclaimed. Now, let's look at this. Heaven and earth of verse 17 is the law and the prophets of verse 16. That's the old covenant system, the old covenant kingdom, the old heaven and earth that would pass away. The new heaven and earth that would come is synonymous with the new kingdom that would come. Now, in light of that, let's read this again. The law and the prophets, or the old covenant kingdom, was being proclaimed all the way from the beginning of that covenant, all the way up to the time of John the Baptist. Then he says, but since the time of John the Baptist, the new heaven and the new earth have been being proclaimed, or the gospel of the kingdom of God has been being preached. Watch this. And everyone, the word literally means all kinds of people, are forcing their way into it. Now, as I speak, Jesus is saying, people are rushing into it, right? Right? It hasn't arrived in its fullness. That wouldn't happen until the old kingdom was destroyed, until the old heaven and earth passed away and the new kingdom arrived in its fullness. But Jesus said at the time that he spoke these words, people were already coming into the kingdom. Therefore, that kingdom could not be off in an invisible heavenly realm somewhere if people were already entering it. Therefore, the new Jerusalem the new heavens and the new earth of Revelation 21 and 22 are not speaking of an invisible realm somewhere. But they're speaking of a kingdom, even though it was a kingdom of the heart, here on planet earth. And this also makes the point that the resurrection in the parable of the um, prodigal son is not talking about a resurrection to an invisible realm somewhere off in a literal heaven somewhere. But it's talking about a revival of spiritual life here on planet Earth. The same thing that Jesus is talking about here in chapter 16, when he's talking about people entering into the kingdom of God there on Earth. All right, guys, thank you. I'll see you next time.